My name is Goran Tramoski, and like Amanda said previously, I am the application engineer over here at Hexagon. Today, I will be showcasing what's new in the latest update of AlphaCam. And we have quite a few new updates. Here are all the sections that have been updated, and we're slowly going to cover most of these topics. What's new? Um, compared to the old. And we will start with. The lathe. And the first three slides here are, are all going to be fairly similar, so we have added these pick buttons. So what these pick buttons do is in, instead of you having to manually input your depth, depth parameters, any values, you could just click those three buttons and choose on your drawing where you want that depth to be or diameter or whatever it is. So we have that set up in the part off cycle where you could choose the Z and diameter levels from the drawing. We have that set up in the facing command. So you could choose the diameter drawing from there as well. And we put those pick buttons in the approach tab in the turning cycle. So again, these are all pretty much the same thing. You're just going on your screen and just clicking your part rather than having to input that value in there. And then the next update we have with the lathe is we included the option for coolant in the tool. So previously, this section was in the machining style, so it was in the operation. We just now moved it to the tool as well. So it could, it'll still be in the operation, but when you create the operation, it's just going to default to whatever you had chosen in the tool. So you can still change it in the operation, but it will be defaulted to what is in the tool. So those are some minor, cha minor changes with the lathe. So now we can go on to the, the bulk of it. So we are going to start with the 3D machine. So with the 3D machining, it's nothing really on the customer's end. It's mainly on the interface with AlphaCam's end. So with AlphaCam, we can now improve the performance of the 3D machining for more difficult models. So we've just improved that processing time, so we're not having to wait as long to process a job to have the operation show up on our part. In the defining tool section, just like the lathe, how we move the coolant to the tool, we also remove these two features, the center cutting tool and the maximum plunge depth to the tool as well. So you'll see in a few slides that this can be controlled in the machining style in the operation as well. But we're setting up that default in the tool. So this is going to be applied to both pocketing and roughing operations. We could get into the actual pocketing and roughing operations now. So like I said before, these, these features are still in the machining style, so they will default to whatever we had it set up in the tool. But you could see here, you could also change the values or, uh, yourself. So just because you create it on the tool level, you input those values, doesn't mean everything's set in stone, and that's the way it has to be. So we can always change it in here as well these entry points. And going piggybacking off of that, the tool library will now have those two fields in there as well, the center cutting and the max plunge depth. So those fields will be in new columns in the tool library. And if you don't have those values set up in the tool, they will show up as zero. So that's just, that's no problem. You just don't have them set up. You don't really need to have those set up. Next, we will look at the solid simulation. 
So one of the things I really like with this new feature is we have the ability to compare our original model with the new simulated model. And it's funny because a customer asked me about this and then a few days later, this version came out of 25.2 that had this feature. So I had to call them back and tell them, hey, we actually do have it. So um, we could compare and contrast if everything is machined the way we need it to be machined. But what you have to remember is you could only do this with solid models. And the reason is, is because when we do a solid simulation, what we're doing is we're saying we're adding a thickness to our part. If we have a 2D geometry, that means everything's flat and you can't compare something flat to something that has thickness on it. We have also improved part visibility. So the command we included was show simulator part and you could toggle that on or off. So if it is off, what you'll see is just the thickness of the material and you'll see how the tool is going around and cutting apart and what it looks like. Whereas if you had it on, you will actually see what the part looked like before adding that material thickness and how that tool is going to be going into the part. In not the solid simulator, but the regular simulator, we have added the part when doing a cross-sectional view. So you can see here, the part will be a little bit darker than the rest of the model. And we used to not show that in the cross-section view, we used to not include that part. One of the more minor, minor changes is the radial menu. And this won't apply to many customers because what we did was we added new default commands into our radial menu. But you'll know if you use this radial menu that you normally customize it to whatever you're doing. So you'll see in the pictures this new default, it's not gonna be like that from customer to customer because they're always customizing it to whatever they need. In the feature extraction, we have added a new command for minimal bounding box alignment. So what this does is it creates the smallest box possible around your parts, okay? This part will be used, uh, These ed the edges of this part will be used to place the part on the X or the Y axis. So normally what it would do, it would just take a solid and align the longest edge with the X and the Y axis. But let's say the longest uh, point of your part is the center of the part. So, and, and you don't want the center to be lined along the X and the Y axis. This way, we're going to draw a box around our part. That's going to be the same length and width essentially as the highest, as the longest point, and then put that on the axis. In the parametric sketcher, we have added the three commands of undo, redo, and run. I'm sorry, and clear drawing next to the run button. But the bigger thing here in the parametric modeler is we've added a comment section. So now you could add, you could insert, edit, and delete comments from your list. And this can be used to specify what the different rules and different values are in your parametric sketcher. Because if I create one file and I give it to Clayton, he's not gonna know what that means unless I have comments to it. So this is a really nice and nifty feature. With solid models, we haven't done too much to them. So when you select the face of a solid model, this little face selector pops up and it's telling you what other faces do you want to select. So all we did was add a new command that allows you to select cylinders that have the same diameter, no matter what plane they're on. So they could be on the top of the part, bottom of the part, side of the part, as long as they have the same diameter as the original selected cylinder, they will be chosen.
biggest changes I would say came in Automation Manager. Definitely made things a lot less, e uh, a lot easier. Sorry. So the first big thing here is we can multi-select our operations, our machining styles in the layer mapping setup. So normally what you'd have to do is you'd have to go to each operation separately, set up the tooling direction, set up the start point settings. But now what you could do is you could click on multiple machining styles and just change the tool direction settings and the entry point settings just one time and it'll apply to all our parts. So I, that was a big time saver for me. So I'm not having to click back and forth and adjust all these parts. And I have a few seconds saved up to practice on my French or something. So we have also included an initial rotation alignment in Automation Manager. So this is on the part level. So now the user can apply the angle they want their part to be rotated at. And this essentially hides the rotation method for that part. So this selection process is different for solid models because the user is asked to pick an edge rather than a 2D geometry. And this just locks your part into place so it won't be changed by the, the nest rotation that you set up. A little bit ago, we talked about the minimal bounding box on the part level. So we have added that feature in Automation Manager in the layer mapping setup as well. And just like you were able to select multiple operations at once, you could also select multiple layers at once. So that's a nice feature. You'll be able to see to delete any layers you don't need. And but remember, when you are doing this, you have to hold down the control key and not the shift key or else it won't work. And then continuing with the layer mapping setup, normally when you create a new setup, everything will be ordered from when you created them. So the first operation you created will always be first. The first, the second setup is always going to be second. This way, what we could do is we could order all our setups alphabetically. And then finally, with the layer mapping setup, this is probably my favorite one. What you normally had to do to look at an operation, to look at these machining styles, is you had to actually click the drop down for the setup. Click the drop down for the layers to see the operation. Now what you could do is you could just click the setup and you could expand all the layers. So I'm minimizing my button clicks so I'm not having to go through each layer and see what tools are in there, what operations are in there. Sorry, you could just drop them all at once. And then finally with an automation manager in the machining order, we added a command to highlight all of the lists that are not being used so you can do what you want with them so either delete them or add to them and now we'll look at a little bit of the nesting so we added supports for saving the sheets in the nest list so now in the project manager, when you have your nested sheets, when you have multiple sheets assigned, you could save the nest list with the sheet, whereas before you could not do that in the project manager. In the quick nest geometries command, we've removed true shape and original nesting and we have added advanced nesting to it. With this command, we'll have a completely different nesting. But what we also have is the ability to create a maximum possible number of parts. So if I have part A, I could say, hey, put the maximum possible on this sheet and it'll do that. And I could also control the kit number 
for those parts in here. When you are done there, it'll take you to this screen right here, which are your nesting parameters. And this is like everything you've seen in AlphaCam. So where do you want the nest to start from? The bottom left, top right. Do you want there to be gap between any of the parts? How long do you want the processing time to be? So this window is still gonna be the same. It just shows up after you did the previous two in the nest geometries command. The configuration, we've just added one little thing. And this is, we have a default color for the clamps and the fixtures layer. So normally they'd all come in, they'd all be gray, but you could go ahead and change that now to make it all colorful and nice. And what we'll end off with is the reports. So with the reports, we've added a new command, nested part position image. So what this is gonna be used for is to help locate where the part is going to be on your labels, whether it's your sheet report or your part labels. You'll see an example of that here. So what it'll do, it'll show you the sheet, it'll highlight the part on your sheet, and it'll have that arrow there. So now we could easily identify where the part's gonna be and then label it accordingly. And these were all the new features, majority of the new features in the latest version of AlphaCam.